today, Bob? Ah, I don't know. Day 12? Could be. <laughs> I think it's day 12. Day 12. Uh, it's day 12 and, um, and the weather has been upon us for the last 48 hours. Uh, we just took a look at this forecast and, uh, and they're predicting more of the same. A little bit lumpier maybe as we approach the English Channel. We still have more than just over 500 miles to go. Uh, yesterday's run was 101 miles, 101 nautical miles, but only about 85 made good because during the night the, the wind took us off a little bit towards the north. Uh, but that's okay, that's the way things go. I've been out and around on the deck this morning, as you can see it's a little bit rough. Uh, not as rough as it has been. Um, we took a, a little bit of a, not exactly a knockdown, but certainly a bit of a broach earlier, which knocked her over onto her beam ends. Uh, certainly way beyond 45 degrees, maybe 50 degrees over. Uh, nothing too serious. And we now know that uh, the weather that we were going through the last 48 hours, at one stage, um, it was fairly consistently a, a gale, so it's gale force 8. And then as uh, the wind shear, as uh, one of the fronts went through us, uh, took the wind speeds up to between 50 and 60 knots. So that would have been a storm force, so up to a force 10. Um, we were asked by the weather people what we did about it, and I told them, well, we kept on sailing, mate, because <laughs> we are going to Cherbourg. They got wine and they got gluten-free French bread, so we hear. <laughs> so uh, uh, he was quite amused by that, but evidently it was, it was um, pretty windy. Uh, there's a whacking great big low pressure system at the moment over London. This is how accurate these guys over London, which is then going to do an unusual counterclockwise swirl around the UK. London to Wales and then come back round into northern France, which is where we're going. <laughs> but hopefully by the time we get there, uh, everything will have moderated some. But I think these seas in the western approaches are bound to be, uh, the western approaches to the English Channel are bound to be um, somewhat lumpy. And in fact, we're going to pass very close to one of the, the exceptionally large buoys, or buoys, to our American viewers that they have um, just out in the Atlantic, which measure the wave heights uh, and various other um, uh, oceanic data. So uh, fortunately those uh, boys or buoys are lit. Uh, maybe we'll get close enough to see one, who knows. We haven't seen much else out here, apart from grey lumpy sea. In its own way, it's quite beautiful. Um, these seas are probably, they're probably about 12 or maybe 15 feet high. Um, probably look a little bit larger than that from time to time because you're looking into the bottom of the trough right up to the top of the peak which makes them seem quite a bit bigger um, but certainly they're good 12 foot seas um, which makes for a small boat makes it quite lumpy and at times they've been quite a bit lumpier than this they certainly were uh, the night before last it was uh, it was very lumpy indeed I suspect the seas were maybe 15 even up to about 20 feet uh, lots of breaking crests so um, apart from that, we're still cleaning out diesel smell from the, uh, from the head. Um, I guess it's all beginning to wash through with a couple of deck leaks we have. It's beginning to wash itself clean, basically. But we need to give it a mop out every day. And we're gradually getting to grips with the leaks on this boat. This has been an exceptionally dry boat. An exceptionally dry boat. And uh, suddenly, uh, she's not. Maybe it's because we did a couple of true ocean passages, I don't know. I think it's probably because she's been in the tropics. I said that on the last vlog. So, um, uh, but we'll get to grips with those. She's uh, a steel boat, so she's completely encapsulated, and it's very easy to see where the holes are drilled in the deck. And the water must be coming in through those holes. And there's a tiny dribble that comes in, just a drip, drip through the stern gland. She has a packing gland uh, for the uh, uh, the drive, uh, the shaft, the engine shaft, where it goes out through the hull. Those things always drip. Um, so there you go. Definitely got my snack appetite back. I'm very pleased to report. I've been eating chips and Mars bars and Snickers bars and I shall probably regret it later. But I've also started eating seasick ta ta sea tablets again. So maybe that's something to do with it. Life on the ocean wave. Is there anything else I need to add first mate? No, I don't think so. You think that's about it? I think that's about it. I think we're about done. First mate says we're probably about done with this vlog. Um, hopefully we'll be able to show you bits and pieces of me crawling around on the deck doing manly manly stuff. 
Manly man! Manly man, yes, that's what it's all about. Very funny. So there you go, we're heading straight for where we want to go to at the moment, almost for the first time on this snaky path voyage. <laughs> At some stage I'll run a little video of the snaky path on the chart and you'll be able to see what a snaky path we took. It's like Kinimini, Swahili for the movement of a snake, like this. We've been the Kinimini route to Sherberg from Porter in the Azores. So from Yacht Koru and Nikki and Bob and Mr Bigglesworth, the once upon a time projectile vomiting cat. Greetings and good afternoon to you. Speak to you tomorrow. Oh, it's a lumpy sea. Dangerous lumpy sea. <laughs> <laughs>